If you've ever designed a full website layout in Figma and you wish there was a click of the button to turn that into a functional website, well, good news, there is. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you all about how to use it. Hey everyone, my name is Megan. I've been a graphic designer for the last eight years and I also have a Patreon community where I teach other creatives how to grow and run a graphic design business. And I have tried lots of website platforms within those eight years. And I've recently come to really love the platform Framer. You guys know I've used WordPress for years, but when it comes to updating my website and making sure that things are working well, WordPress can definitely be a lot more tedious. And I have found that Framer, not only with the responsiveness settings, but just the way the backend feels works so well for me. And I'm sure you guys will also love it too. Plus, if you like Figma or even Adobe XD, it feels so similar to that. But in today's video, I'm going to show you specifically how to utilize the Figma app to turn your websites into a functional, beautiful working website with literally just one click. A few of my favorite things about Framer is that you do not need to know how to code. You can actually use the visual building back end to make the website look and feel exactly how you want. I also love this because when you hand your websites off to your clients, they're not gonna know how to code a website or how to figure out a very confusing and bulky back end. But Framer makes it so easy, not only for you as a designer, but for the clients when they become the owners of the website. Another thing with Framer is you can start from tons of different templates. They have a template library of over 700 templates, which is amazing. And you guys, these templates are so on trend. They are very clean, very aesthetic, and very minimal. And they're not like those kind of cheesy templates that you're seeing everybody using. So I really feel like their templates give you a great starting point if you are just playing around with the platform or if you want to create a website in a really quick turnaround. You can make the most advanced scroll animations without using any code. So you can make an easy extra passive income by selling Framer templates or even just by referring your clients to Framer, which I'm all about diversifying your income streams and this is such an easy way to make that happen. Okay, enough about Framer because I could go on and on about all the things I love about it. So let's head on over to my computer and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, I'm super excited to import my client's website into Framer with you all. This is the website I want to import, but before we do that, I wanted to share a few best practices for making sure that the import from Figma to Framer is smooth. So first things first, it's important to design your Figma using auto layouts. Auto layouts basically just make sure that every element that you're importing can resize responsibly. And we're going to actually tell Framer the sizing of like the frame that we use, which for this, I designed it in the MacBook Pro 14 inch. Check over to the prototype, or we can just click on the frame here and we can see what exactly that sizing is. But this is important because if you have the wrong sizing or you're not using auto layouts, you can run into it looking all over the place. So make sure you're doing auto layout. I probably didn't do it perfect, but as you can see, if I click on certain things like this, that it's in a frame now. And when you turn a design into an auto layout, it will basically put it in its own frame. So I also did it for this section here. We can see that that's in a frame. And I also wanna make sure that the sizing of this is matching our design, just to make sure that everything imports in in that correct sizing. So we have that set up. And if you want a quick and easy way to create an auto layout, let's say you've already designed everything and you didn't know that you needed to do that, so you wanna go backwards a little, what you can do is just select the things on your page and go to shift A and it will turn it into an auto layout for you. So that's an easy way to do it. Another easy best pra practice to do when importing your design into Figma or into Framer is to import it in chunks, so not all at once. And um, another thing to keep in mind is after pasting our Figma design into Framer, you can adjust the layers to use fill or fit sizing within the framer stacks. So I'm gonna show you guys all of that. And another another thing I wanna mention, the last thing I wanna mention for best practice 
is to treat fonts, animations, interactions, components, advanced text formatting, or strokes manually. Those are not going to transfer over exactly how we want. So although it'll get a lot of things over for us, it's not going to do everything. So any sort of like custom Figma fonts and all of that, we might have to manually do that or any text features and things like that. But for the most part, we'll get a really good head start on everything. So I turned a lot of this in to auto layouts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to Figma plugins and I already have it in here, I believe. Yeah, Figma to HTML with Framer. And you can just go to Manage Plugins if you don't have this yet. And you can search for the plugin that you need. I did that really quickly. But if we type in Framer, we'll see that that is the one that comes with it. So I'm going to click on that. And it says Select a Layer to Copy. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click on the layer that we want to import. And let's go back to the plugin and make sure that it copies everything for us. And as you can see right down here, it is copying those layers. So it did that pretty quickly. So now what we're going to do is, and I'll just say copy to clipboard, and then we can paste it in Framer. So I opened up my Framer and my new project here that I've already titled. I'm just going to click in here and we're going to go to Command V on our keyboard. I have a Mac computer and that's the shortcut to paste. So I'm going to do Command V and it might take a minute. We can see the progress right down here, but once it's in here, we'll see if everything imported properly. And like I mentioned, you should have, I should have changed the sizing of the desktop before doing this, but if we didn't, that's okay. We can change it afterwards as well by clicking on this and going to our width and changing it to 1400. And actually let's go back to our Figma and see what that exact sizing was because I can't remember. It is 1512. So let's change it to that. There we go. And then all I'm gonna have to do is drag this down so we can see everything else. And it looks like some of this didn't import correctly, but for the most part, everything is looking okay. The toggles didn't import correctly, but we can fix that afterwards. Or we can even just delete it and try to import it again. So I might even do that with you guys. So let's just delete all this. I'm going to delete this. Okay. So some of these weren't auto layout and it almost looks like the ones that weren't auto layout imported in better. But let's just see. This section needs to be imported again. Looks like that was kind of messed up. So let's go back to our Figma and let's go into this section here because this is what wasn't imported correctly. And I'm going to ungroup and I'm also going to ungroup it again to remove that auto layout. And I'm actually going to just group each individual item. Okay, so let's see what would happen if I don't have it in auto layout, but I just have it as a group. And this is what I would recommend naming your layers. I'm not the best at this, but if we said gentle care and we go up here, plugins copy to clipboard and let's see how that copies over okay so that copied over a lot better so this is why I recommend it as a best practice to do it in sections to make it easier on you because that seemed to import in way way better I'm actually gonna bring this to the top because I want it to be layered on top of everything but as you can see on framer it's so easy to to do those like overlapping sections and layers and I just think that's a really really cool feature about it so let's do the same thing with this with this one just group it back together group select all these plugins and copy to clipboard and let's paste it and there we go it imported in pretty well so that is awesome once it's in here though I would probably oops want to go and add frame around it just so we're not risking the responsiveness settings being all over the place so let's select all these go to add frame same thing with this one add frame oops and then let's say add frame to that if you're wondering if you were seeing when i was doing that what the difference is between a frame and a stack because if i were to click on this right and right click you would see add stack or add frame so a frame in framer <laughs> i'm gonna get those words confused is basically just a basic layer so if you're into coding that is like a div 
and if you are it's great for like background shapes or fixed position elements and doesn't have stacking behavior unless it's nested in a stack whereas a stack is a really great tool if you are going to be arranging elements vertically or horizontally so this for example could be a stack like that and it's really great for it's pretty much similar to figma's auto layout so if you didn't auto layout it when transferring it over you could potentially stack it if you feel like that's going to help a lot with the responsiveness settings but i typically like to use the frame just to make sure everything is in its own little area here but okay so since these toggle elements didn't import incorrectly either let's go and import these manually by just clicking on this and this is something we might have to do manually inside a framer because it does have that effect of toggling open and we probably are going to have to create a component for that but let's just go figma to html copy to clipboard and paste and it looks like it's not importing correctly and that could be because the auto layout is getting messed up so let me go back in here and let's ungroup it. I'm going to do a normal group instead of a frame. I'm going to go command C or actually I'm getting ahead of myself. And I'm going to go back up to the plugin, copy to clipboard and paste. Oops. So it pasted in, but let's just make sure we select the group before moving anything. And it looks like one piece of text wasn't imported in. So it looks like this section also did not import in correctly. I'm gonna remove some of the grouped items and we're just gonna do it manually by per section. So I'm just gonna click on those, go back to the plugin, copy to clipboard. We'll go back to framer and paste it. Sometimes it will paste things far up on the page. So be sure to just check that. I'm bringing it back down. Here we go and when it comes to creating like auto layouts inside a framer we can do that by creating a stack so this right here i'm gonna go right click and say add stack okay and then we can click on that stack again and we can say fit content so that it's not that huge square that we were seeing and then let's just center it with this section here and let's also bring this up so it's on top of the image awesome cool so for the button here i also want to with these i'm actually going to be creating it as a component so i'm going to click on the button here we can actually do it based on this one but when you click on this you can right click and say create component and i'm going to call this button green and then let's go back over here copy it and then we'll paste it in here okay we have that in here and i'm going to we're actually just going to create it based on this variant so let's just mimic the design we'll create the fill by selecting this color let's create a radius of 20. let's copy this text and paste the text in here let's just make sure everything is centered awesome i feel like the radius is a little too much okay so we have variant one and then we can do a hover effect so that it shows a different color when it's hovered so let me go to my figma let's select this color for the hover effect perfect and then we'll just have to change the links inside of the page but there is the variant so that is the hover effect and then when it's pressed we can also do another effect but i just want the hover so let's go back to our pages so i'm going to add the button to my workspace library that way it will be easily accessed okay now that we have mostly everything in here i want to show you guys how there is some really cool transition and like loading effects and hover effects that you could do on framer so for the text here i think it'd be really cool to add a kind of like load in effect so i'm going to go to the effects tab right over here on the right and we're going to do a appear effect on appear we'll do a fade in effect and then when you click on here you can change the offset of it opacity things like that on scroll we can make it appear on scroll but we can also add an effect that is a you can add a text effect if you want it to type in which is kind of cool but let's see if we do a scroll animation yeah i want to go back to the appear on appear just like that and you can always hit the play button up here to test it out so let's go back 
hit on the effect here. That should be good. So let's go to play. So we can have it do that, where when we scroll it disappears. I don't really want that. I actually want it to be... Let's do a blur. We can do a little delay on this. And let's see how that looks. Yeah, I like effects like that. Cool. I just want to make it a little slower. And we can even do it per element or per line. Okay. And then I want to do an effect for these as well. So for the icons, let's do a appear effect when the layer is in view. And we'll just do that same thing for these. Same thing for this one. Awesome. Now let's play it. So those loaded in pretty fast. I don't know if you guys were able to see that. Let me reload it. Let's see if we can slow it down a little bit. Let's delay it by like one second. And we'll just have to do it with these as well. Okay, let's play that. There we go. Awesome. And then I want to add an effect to this rainbow here. So I'm going to click on that. We're going to go to effects, scroll animation, and then let's have it slide in from the right. And we can delay it a little bit. Yeah, that's cool. Awesome. So I like doing that to the website to just make it feel a little more dynamic, a little more fun to scroll through. But I feel like so far this is coming together nicely and I it was so fast doing it with the uh, plugin using Figma and Framer. Even though I had to do a few things manually, it still saved me so much time and it just makes it very easy to bring all your elements in and then play with it. So really nice way to build your websites from scratch and save a little bit of time. If you guys want to see me create these to be more animated and like clicking on the top on the accordions and clicking through the testimonials, let me know. I can make a whole video on that. But I really just wanted to show you how easy it is to take your Figma design and bring it into Framer using the plugin. All right, you guys, that is what I want to show you today about Framer, how awesome the platform is. And I can't wait to show you guys more in-depth tutorials on Framer. If you guys want to learn more about it, be sure to check out my Patreon. I always have a link down below for you all, but also check out Framer. I have a link down there for you guys as well. If you want to give it a try, you can do that for free. And then you just have to pay when you connect a domain to it. So it's very amazing but I have a special offer for you all right down below. But I hope this helps you guys skip any headaches when it comes to redeveloping your Figma sites into a functional website. It's such an easy tool and I had to share this with you guys. But if you want more tips like this, or if you're another graphic designer and you wanna connect, it would mean the world to me if you liked this video and subscribed to my channel for more. But thank you so much for being here and I will see you in my next video.